What's up, MMA fans? I'm Marcel Alonso talking here from Brazil, Rio de Janeiro. And today we are catching up with BJJ legend, Damian Maia. Welcome, my friend. Thank you, Marcelo. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Damian, uh, you're going to face Bilal Muhammad on UFC 263. You've mm -hmm. been like almost one year, more than one year without fighting mm -hmm. MMA since you fought uh, Gilbert Burns. How is your camp going for that fight? It's going to happen in June. Yeah, it's it's great, you know. Like I was I was talking to you before. We pretty much <coughs> we as a jiu-jitsu fighter, we pretty much train all year round. We we never stop. And and of course, when we have the camp, we focus more on your opponent and and we change a little bit of training. But I, I'm I'm always training. It's something that I always been doing, and I will be doing even when, after I retire. Damon, uh, Belal is coming from a pretty impressive sequence of fights. Uh, in 10 fights in UFC, he won the last eight fights. Uh, how do you see him as an opponent? He's pretty tough, you know, very, very tough, like all the, the, the top 15 guys. And, you know, I, that's not new for me. I've been fighting tough guys forever. And, and, and I... I'm sure you know who will come very well prepared for this fight. And how, how do you visualize that fight going? Like uh, three rounds or you, you, you think you, uh, it's going to finish before? How, how do you see that going? I always hope to submit the fight, but uh, he's a tough guy and a tough opponent. So uh, first I need to think about winning the fight and then uh, that's the first goal. So it doesn't matter how it will be. That's my first goal. So, and, and how is your camp going uh, with the pandemics and everything? Mm -hmm. uh, you bring uh, specific guys uh, to, to wrestle with you. With you. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. you need some boxers to help you uh, once the law is pretty much like a very tough striker. Uh, mm -hmm. How is that going? Yeah, I you know I train regularly uh, and I always you know bring some wrestlers. There's my my one of my coach called Cody Hammer. was here in Brazil and and he he w went back to West, but he's coming back next week to help me. And I have a great sparring partners and and one of those like Elias Silvera is a very very tough fighter he used to fight in the UFC and now he's fighting in Russia and he he's a very very good striker and and, and uh it's a, a very tough guy to take down so uh, I think I, I have good good partners to train and Damien last time we talked you said uh, that would be your last fight uh, how is your plan for the future and you 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 are pretty much you're gonna be 44 in November this year, mm -hmm. but you're pretty much in, in a great shape. You 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 won the last three fight, four from your last four fights. You won three. You just lost to Gilbert Burns the last one. And what you visualize about your future? You think you're gonna make more fights? You're gonna renew your contract with the UFC, or you think about retirement? You want to beat the record of Ranger Code 2, mm. 47 years, and, and mm. then Henderson, 46 years, or you, you plan to retire before? No, uh, I probably retire before, sorry, but uh, you know, I, I'm very focused on this fight right now. If Let's see how it will go, and if it goes well, I would like to do one more fight, but you never know. Maybe, maybe this is the last one. And but that's pretty. That's really something that I'm not paying attention right now or thinking about right now because I have a pretty tough opponent ahead of me, and it doesn't change. It's always, you know, it's always a fight. It doesn't matter if it's the first one, the last one, or before, one before the last one. It's a tough fight, and and we gotta be ready and we gotta be focusing on what we gotta do. But you told me you want to retire in front of a crowd better in yeah. Rio de Janeiro. As you said, is the, 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 the beginning of everything is in Rio mm -hmm. de Janeiro, where Vale Tudo started. Yeah. So 
uh, you, you would would you like to have that last fight in front of your fans? I think it's in 2022 we're gonna have the fans back to the arenas. Maybe you could you should have the last fight in front of your yeah. fans in Rio de Janeiro. That's that's for sure would be great, and it's something that I cannot control, you know. Uh, but it would be nice to to end my career in front of not just in front of a crowd that thanks to all this UFC that I'm gonna fight there there will be a crowd but in Rio de Janeiro where Jiu Jitsu Brazilian Jiu Jitsu born and the Vale Tudo fights born would be very very special. Great, Damian, you always. Uh, were considered by Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu community as the most important representative. When you stop, who, who do you think is going to be that guy, the king of Jiu-Jitsu in MMA? I think, you know, the guys that I see right now is Charles because, I'll, you know, he, he's different style than me because he's not going just to do Jiu-Jitsu. He goes to do Muay Thai and Jiu-Jitsu when he fights. But he's very, very skillful in the submission. So I think with this mix, you know, he's doing pretty well. And he can be, you know, the, the, the guy who is still carrying on the, the, the flag of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And, and I hope, you know, he will do. Uh, another guy that is pretty much a top guy, top one of the most respected nowadays in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in grappling matters is Gordon Ryan, and he's going mm -hmm. to MMA. Uh, would you, which advice, uh, being one of the best ever in Jiu-Jitsu, would you give to him? I think the advice that I give to everybody that is moving to MMA from Jiu-Jitsu that I. I would give to Rodolfo Vieira, I would give to, to Bouchesh, you know, all those really, you know, top guys in Jiu-Jitsu is you got to cut, cut, uh, get, get a shortcuts, you know. You have a red, like, main thing, you know, you have the, the most efficient style that people ever invented, which is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and you, you got to adapt smart, so... I always say if you're like a K1 champ, like a kickboxing champ, you don't go there and try to take the guy down and, 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 <laughs> and train for that and try to use some jiu-jitsu because you think it's nice. You're going to try to defend takedown and you're going to train for that. And, you know, the, the awkward thing is when we're jiu-jitsu fighters, many guys, they go training striking, but they train striking just for the sake of striking, just to, to, to do something that, are not in their field and, and I don't think that's that's the best way I, I not I just don't think but I'm sure that's not the best way so if I could give advice to a guy like Gordon or any jiu-jitsu I would be focus a lot in two things first in wrestling so because wrestling you know they they, they have the guys that they are specializing in takedowns and all these guys, you know, the grapplers that they are specializing in takedowns, like wrestlers and judo guys, they are pretty tough. Also, they are, their mindset is 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 very tough because it's it's very uh, struggling, you know, to fight a grappling, a stand up grappling like wrestling and judo because you never stop and and it's action all the time and you you get well prepared in terms of your muscles, you know, your lower back, your legs and your stamina, everything. And plus you can adapt very much and, and easy your game to your game, your jiu-jitsu game. Because we have our takedown in jiu-jitsu, but once you train with those guys, you for sure you pick up some stuff. And that's the beautiful thing about Virginia jiu-jitsu is that there is no rules. You know, you can, you can pretty much use everything if works. We just, you know, adapt to our style. And the second thing that I think is really, really important, understand that you are training striking to use your jiu-jitsu. So the striking will be much more focused instead of punching and kicking, much more focused on distance, on, on footwork, on close the distance or keep the distance. And that's really important, especially in a cage that is really big, like the UFC cage. And 
I think it's hard still to find a, a striker coach who understand that. Most strikers coach, they teach the athlete to strike, not to use the strike as a mean or the movement as a mean to get. And I'm sure, you know, my coach, Ivan Oliveira, is the one that adapted most, be, the best uh, that I know. But that is just one, Ivan Oliveira. So I think, you know, it's something that we need to have this, this, these professionals that we don't have yet. I think in the future, we're going to have a professional who understand if the guy is a striker, how he's going to use his striking MMA. And if he, the guy is a grappler, how he would uh, train him to use his grappling MMA. And that's, that's something that is, is new, the sport is new. So it's something that we're going to have better in the future. So when I train, I never train just, you know, pure striking. I always train with clinches and this kind of thing because it's, it's different, let's say, when you do like, you know, jab and cross, and you, you can do just jab and cross and go away. You can do jab and cross and sleep, but you can also do in an MMA fight, jab and cross and shoot, or jab and shoot and jab and leave, you know, jab and, so it's not the same as just striking. You you have the, the shoots as a, you can shoot as, as one part of the sequence you can jab shoot the guy escapes you you do a hook and this kind of thing so it's not easy to find a, a coach who understands that and i think this uh, is important so anyways uh, there's two things train a lot of wrestling and try to find a coach or train your training you know train your coach to understand how we should use the striking and, and, and that is much more about footwork and, and distance management than the, the actual striking. Devin, before I face uh, Gilbert Burns, you fought Ben Aspen, an historical mm -hmm. grappler versus grappler match. How do you see uh, his decision to take the risk of face those YouTubers? Uh, Jay Boxers. Paul, would you, would you accept one million challenge to face some uh, you, Brazilian YouTuber uh, in a boxing match? Uh, it's so hard to say, Marcelo, because, you know, I hate, I hate judge. And, and, and I think, you no, know, he got a good money and, and he, he, he decided, okay, let's go, let's, let's try, let's give a try. Uh, maybe he could be more prepared you know for for the the the, the task but he, he always you always need to to give compliments to somebody who goes and tries something that is not your your that is not your expertise and and he's just for the sake of challenging himself so i don't judge him uh, you know saying bad things i just uh, maybe he could prepare more for that. I don't know if it's just because of the money or the challenge, but I don't care, you know. You are free to do whatever you want. Uh, and Damien, people are already comparing Kamaru Usman to JSP. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you, do you see someone to stop Kamaru Usman? Uh, or do you think he's going to be the new king of the division? It's tough, but you know, uh, I've been in this sport for a long time and so many fighters that I saw uh, raising, rising and people say, man, this guy will take like years till somebody taking out of this and, and it was not so long how we expect. But Kamaru is, is a tough guy. I think Kamaru is a very hard guy to beat. With that said, I think there's... Welterweight is a very competitive weight, so it just depends on Kamaru. If he's not in a good day, you know, in some tight defense, the the top guys can 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 beat him. But it, it's very hard, you know. He he's very complete. He's very athletic. He's very technical. He plays, you know. He, he fights in in both instances. He can wrestle. He can. He he's evolving. He's striking. And he can fight on the ground. He does everything. It's it's pretty it's pretty pretty good athlete. Great, Devin. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, my friend. I'm looking forward to see your 
Museum Academy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope after your fight, you can go to Sao Paulo to finally sure. uh, meet you and, and see that amazing uh, new academy. Thank you, Marcel. Thank, yeah, the academy is great. Thank you very much for the the advisor that you gave. You know, uh, you you being one of the advisor for the expo about the history of Jiu Jitsu that we put on the wall. And, and you know, I hope you come to to see the gym and everybody who is in, if you guys are in Brazil also you're welcome to go there. I'm I'm there almost every day. Uh, it will be a pleasure. Thank you.